All cells run many chemical reactions, which collectively are called cellular metabolism. These chemical reactions serve several different functions. They can produce energy for the cell. They can make the building blocks that the cell will need to make bigger molecules, so in order to assemble things like proteins or carbohydrates or lipids or DNA or RNA. And there's still other reactions that are going to serve to eliminate harmful waste products that the cell produces. The figure I'm showing you is a schematic summary of the metabolic pathways in a human cell. And while this looks complicated, it's important to remember that there are still other pathways used by plants and fungi and microorganisms that will have additional reactions that are absent in humans, so it could be even more complicated. Consider, for example, the fact that plants use photosynthesis. Well, we're not seeing that on this schematic. Well, let me zoom in on a portion of one of these pathways to make a few points about how metabolic pathways work. So there are a few principles that I want you to bear in mind. And the first is that each one of these reactions is catalyzed by an enzyme. So for example, over here, we have a compound called isocitrate, and that is being converted into another compound called alpha-ketoglutarate. And this blue arrow here, that's the reaction that would be catalyzed by an enzyme, and the name of the enzyme that's catalyzing this is isocitrate dehydrogenase. So every time you see a blue text on this figure, it's an enzyme. Now the next thing that I want you to notice is that while we could look at individual reactions on their own, we could look just at how isocitrate gets converted into alpha-ketoglutarate, um, in cells reactions are organized into metabolic pathways. So this particular reaction here is part of a bigger metabolic pathway. There's a series of eight reactions, which collectively are called the citric acid cycle. That's also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. It's really a central reaction in cellular metabolism. The last big picture thing is that there are two broad types of chemical reactions. So sometimes what happens is that we take a large molecule and we break it down. So for example here, where we're taking citrate, a six carbon compound, and then converting it into oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound, we've broken it down. We're releasing carbon dioxide as we do this. And we'd say those kinds of metabolic reactions are catabolic. But there are also anabolic pathways, which will lead to the synthesis of larger molecules from smaller precursor molecules. Here, for example, there's a compound called the glyoxylate. That's only two carbons long. But it can be combined with something called acetyl coenzyme A in order to form malate, a four carbon compound. So that would be an anabolic pathway. All right, we don't have time to talk about every single pathway in the cell. It wouldn't be practical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on some key pathways that are seen in a lot of organisms and that will be really key for understanding physiology. So here I've switched to a much bigger scale. Now we're looking at whole cells. So on the left we've got blood cell, a capillary full of blood cells and those are delivering nutrients to the tissue over here. Some of the things that will be present in the blood will be gases like oxygen, but also small molecules like sugars and amino acids and fatty acids that can be delivered from, say, the digestive system, or the lungs in the case of oxygen, over to the tissues. And then those cells in the tissue can take it up, and they'll produce waste products like carbon dioxide or nitrogenous wastes or lactic acid, and that can then get sent through the blood to different tissues where we can deal with it. Typically, when people are talking about animal cells, they think about a few key metabolic pathways. So if we zoom in on a single cell. Imagine that glucose has been delivered by the, the bloodstream. It's outside the cell. Well, it will get taken into the cell, and then we can take glucose and, using a process called glycolysis, break it down to form a molecule called pyruvate. Pyruvate's a major branch point in the cell. It can either be converted into lactate using a process called fermentation, or we can take the pyruvate, and this will happen if there's oxygen around, send it into the mitochondria, where there that tricarboxylic acid cycle, the citric acid cycle that I showed you previously, will run in the matrix of the mitochondrion. And that in turn produces compounds then that the electron transport chain um, can further process along with an enzyme called ATP synthase, leading to the creation of ATP. Plant cells have these reactions as well, so there's glycolysis taking place in the cytoplasm, we've got the tricarboxylic acid cycle taking place in mitochondria along with the electron transport chain and an ATP synthase, but plant cells also have another reaction, photosynthesis, and that will take place in the chloroplasts. So that's a very brief overview of metabolic pathways, and we can dive into the specifics of individual reactions in future videos.